the the fort there Mount Taylor Mount yeah, Asparius Mount Taylor, yes. mm-hmm. Yes, Mount Blanca, San Francisco Peaks, Mount yeah. Hesperius. Yeah. So those are our, our most, the, uh, and our gods live there, we believe it, on these mountains and places like that. So uh, so he says that uh, these, these, the four corner ones represent that. And then this one here is the uh, lightning ball that comes down zigzag. Lightning. This represent this, and then this is uh, the rain that falls down, shallow rain, and then this one here represent a female lightning bolt. And this is the rain, so she says. And then, whenever you weave, do not get stuck through here. Now, if you if you comb or if you're uh, Weft rolls over, you don't just reach and then drain it. Or if somebody gives you water or something, you don't pass, don't, don't pass anything through between here. And then right after you finish it, you take it off. Don't let your children run around with it. That's what, that's what the five shower woman said. And that, that's the, 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 some of the rules. And also she, she told her not to finish it at night. You can weave at night, but not to finish it. Even if you come to the last one thread, do it the next day. That's what that's what the, some rules are. And years ago, when we, now we have permanent uh, looms like this, we we can't take it off all apart in one day. Uh, but years ago, they used to just tie them here and down there to weave on. So, and then uh, she says, uh, don't scratch, don't hit the, don't hit anybody with their baton. And then uh, don't, and take care of your tools because these tools are yours, but they're not really yours. They belong to the gods. And you take care of, you're just borrowers, they say. And then with the comb, you don't scratch your hair like we did. <laughs> you, you don't scratch your hair. You <laughs> so the, that's one of the rules. And do not leave your baton in your in mm-hmm. your uh, thread when you leave your when you leave it when you leave your loom. She says, if you keep on doing it, you never really finish it, and always finish your rug. Do not cut your rug because this is your lifeline here, these continuous warping. So those are the things that uh, I might have left some out. Well, this is, this, each part of the, the rug, I mean, the, each part of the loom means something. They, somebody yeah, was telling me, uh, could you tell us what, what they, each part of it means? Uh, uh, this one here rep- represents the Sky Father, and then this one here is Mother Earth. And these represent the, 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 the rain and stuff like this. Is that is, is that your question? Yeah, that's what I. Somebody was telling me that yeah, that they, uh-huh. they and then and the then, the rain, the thing, yeah. the the and the wharf is the rain and all that. Do not weave if it's really thunder. Yeah. Because I can understand that when it rains, uh, your the uh, wool gets mm-hmm. wet and it outstretch. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And then, and then it, it's true too. You don't, you, you do not want to weave in the rain, because one of the famous weaver, two great hill weaver. What was her name? Daisy. Daisy. One. Daisy Touche. Yeah. Daisy Dalachi. Dalachi. Yeah. Yeah, Dalachi. She's a, one of these famous weaver, and she was weaving. And then, I think that was torch her last. Her last rug that she was weaving, she was old, and that somehow a lightning struck the house and burned all her stuff. I have pictures of her I can show you guys. Yeah, uh-huh. and she, she's uh, one of uh, Tanabad's uh, great, 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 great grandma, I think. The grandmother comes all the same plan. 
So that was the, the, the rude thing that we, and when, when the first white shell when we came into down to see to visit the, the, uh, the spider woman, she had four battens that were all different. And she had four cones and four uh, spindles. They were all made out of the sacred stone. White shell and then uh, turquoise and abalone and, and black, uh, we call that black um, jade. Jade, uh -huh. So they were all made out of that. So um, even if you don't know just a little bit of that story, I think it would help you do your work. It's just the way I say their songs were about. I'm sorry that I don't know how to sing. My son-in-law used to sing that when I, when I, I had students at my house. I said, the, the rug song for us so my student can have their mind open so they can start weaving. So uh, that's my story. And then there's a, uh, I told it to, uh, I always tell it to my students. Some, some of these older women don't allow telling to another person. Just like I said, they want to keep things to themselves. But I, I, I can't keep secrets, you know. <laughs> so don't tell me your secret. I always let it out. <laughs> and every little thing we uh, we we never would have to respect it. Even little bugs, we don't step on them. We don't we don't uh, do harmful things to it. Oh, and all these men that were sitting in that uh, shelter, they uh, they each sang a song to bless her with it. And then, uh, so that's what they do when a young woman, when a, a girl becomes a young woman, when she first gets her cycle, they have a, a blessing way. They, she has to make her earth cake within four days and she has to run all, they said it used to be all four direction, now only one direction to go to go to, 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 to the east. east. Uh-huh, they run about two or three miles, and if you're a runner, you can probably run about 10 miles. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. people follow them. Mm -hmm. And then when, if you get tired, you just sit there until they're coming back. They have to do it before the sun comes up, all four times. And they used to grind corn their hands, but now we have a uh, you, you, uh, Anglo people uh, make a grinding stone, so we start <laughs> using that. <laughs> but usually they have a grinding stone there, they, they use maybe just tin corn or something to grind, to put it in, to make it look like they defend it themselves. And then on the fourth, the fourth night, no, the third night, see, the next day would be the fourth day, that's when they cut the cake and they do. They circle the middle and the, the middle stays in the earth and the other they share. But the, the woman shouldn't eat her cake, the young lady doesn't eat her cake. And she, they have all different kind of jewelry, no matching jewelry. People would put their, their, their jewelry on the, the lady and she'd be wearing all, all that jewelry by running. Her, her bracelet would be about that. And then she runs about maybe two or three miles. She don't fall. If she falls, all her riches go down. She, she won't wear it anymore. And we Navajos, our jewelry are our riches. But to an end, though, diamonds are your riches. Gold. <laughs> and <laughs> stuff like that. Is that right? Mm -hmm. My children are my riches. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's the way with Navajos, too. Uh, people... People that, that, that don't have no children, they usually have a lot of horses, cows. They used to have a lot of horses and cows, sheep, and those are their, their children too, their riches. But people that have a lot of, lot of children, the Navajos used to have about maybe 10, 10, five boys, five girls, some of them 17. And then those are their riches, and they're the ones that don't hardly have anything because I guess everything goes to the kids. <laughs> Mouths to feed. Yeah. <laughs> Mouths to feed. But those, though, those are their riches. 
and then we don't we don't choose our kids out as soon as 18, but my husband did. <laughs> with with Tanapa. <laughs> he said, as soon as you, you turn 18, you can start paying your rent, pay for your food. <laughs> That's a little different. <laughs> yeah, but in a way, I think he, he did right. He did. But, but, uh, but we, uh, but we don't, we don't really chase them up, but we have them a lot. And then that's why he told me as soon as I gave up my prison permit, he said, don't get your hand into it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's it's part of the Navajo life. And then during, during, during the, our weaving, maybe you have some questions you want to be asking me. If I know it, I'm willing to tell you and all that. How about the round sticks? The one that, the broomstick. Oh, and and these, well, these are broomsticks now. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes a broomstick is just a broomstick. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I'll tell you a joke about that too. Uh, I was told that these were all out of a black shell, and then not black shell, uh, white, 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 white shell, and then turquoise and all that. That's, that's all I was told. So, so uh, well, everything should be made out of earth. Well, it is, you know. Uh -huh. And then the Navajo Chiro, the, uh, the real, the original, were uh, domestic animals. And then they came in and then they came to me. That's the way I was told. So. But, uh, but in the, in the Pelagana way, in a white man way, came from Spain and all that. It might be true too. But um, years ago, our grand grandparents, parents, parents, way then, of course, they had nothing. So they probably was true that they were, that these true sheep were uh, once uh, mountain goats and all that. I thought the Spanish brought merino. Yeah, my, and then the we we cross well, we breeding go, to get we, the churro. We, we we had churro all these years. Our great great grandparents, and the, like I said, we were weavers, and uh, and somewhere along the way, when uh, things begin to get to be uh, the when, we, when the councilman meets and then they they thought that Reno was really good wool. And then we, so that's why we got mixed breed, and we almost lost our children. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. We got mixed breed, and then, but uh, mainly our, our sheep were always uh, churro sheep. They're double horns. Some have double, and some don't. They don't. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but to to a weavers, you find out, or, or to a spinner, any kind of wool is a good wool. <laughs> And then, uh, but uh, if you're a real professional, with some people say chew is yeah. too hard. They're not soft. This is a very best one. But to, to me, if you're a spinner, all the wood is perfect. Oh, let's see. I'll wait to see. Oh. So uh, that that's my story. <laughs> <laughs>